Okay. We are recording this concert both on audio and video by Cesar Papetti and Amy Strauss Glass. The program should run about 90 minutes without intermission. I once told Morton Gould, whose daughter Abby Burton is here somewhere. Where are you, Abby? There she is. Um, that I would have to leave his Bryant Library lecture early to attend Christopher Keene's memorial. And he joked, that's OK. I'll just wave and cry out, anti-Semite. <laughs> but he, he didn't. And we won't either. But if you do need to leave early, please sit on the aisle and do so quietly. This concert represents the coming together of many strands. The last time my wife, Helene Williams, and I performed in this hall, as part of my library degree program, was June 27, 1994, with my EG, a musical portrait of Emma Goldman, celebrating the 125th birthday of that great Russian, Jewish, American anarchist troublemaker. <laughs> my mother, Emily R. Lehrman, a native Russian speaker, who in her youth had been the interpreter for the great Russian Jewish actor Solomon Mikhoyles, played the Russian interpreter in the scene with Lenin. And she worked with you, Manju, on the staff of the Instructional Media Center for here for 28 years until her retirement. And she's here today with my father, both celebrating their 89th birthdays this year. <laughs> and speaking of Russian connections, we're very pleased to welcome now to the stage Dr. Olga Zatsepina, director of the Russian American Cultural Heritage Center, who will make a presentation of a book she's co-written on this first day of the first Russian American History Month in New York State. Okay. This year, the Russian American Cultural Heritage Center, Roxy for short, joined by 30 Russian-American organizations of New York State, initiated the idea of celebrating April as the Russian-American History Month. And the main intent of the Russian-American History Month is to draw the attention of the general public to the history of Russian-Americans and the role they have played and still play in the history of the United States. April falls within the academic year and provides an opportunity for schools and universities to focus the attention of students on this history and acquire a better understanding of it. Also, it gives an opportunity for events such as this concert today to recall matters significant to the Russian-American community, like the tremendous contributions of Russian-American Jews to American musical culture. The Russian community is arguably the least known of all the major identity groups living in the United States, a country that boasts of the diversity and respect to its citizens. In the U.S., the image of Russians remains distorted through the prisms of the Cold War and other factors. This month of the respectful attention will encourage a more informed and more positive perspective. Roxy is committed to preserving and sharing the full scope and best aspects of Russian American culture with all who can value and enjoy it. Those of you who speak and read Russian may be interested in reading a book, Russians in the USA, Organizations of Russian Immigration in the 20 and 21st Centuries, published a few months ago that I have the privilege of co-authoring with Dr. Alexander Ruchkin. Feel free to take one if you are interested. And thank you for your attention and for inviting us to this wondrous musical adventure we are all about to share. Thank you, Olga. As, as request, now, well, copies of this book are available here free. They are in Russian. Hasn't been translated yet, but hopefully they will be soon. Also available are CDs for sale at $15 a piece by various members of the Long Island Composers Alliance. As requested, uh, this book will be critiqued by my mother and then donated to the Russian collection of the Queens College Library in the name of the Baldeb Foundation, which has co-sponsored this event along with my father's Professor Edgar H. Lehrman Memorial Foundation, named after his brother, who was a well-known professor and translator of Russian literature into English. 
the main sponsor of today's concert, with public funds from NISCA decentralization administered through the Huntington Arts Council, is the Long Island Composers Alliance, celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. In fact, there's a 40th anniversary concert on June 3rd at the South Huntington Library. The first piece on today's program, written for this concert, is by Leica's co-founder and current president, Hofstra Professor Herbert A. Deutsch. I just wanted to come over here and say hello to you all. Hi. I have seen, I've seen many of you, I know many of you, the Long Island Composers Alliance, as Leonard has said, has been around now for 40 years. Uh, I am one of the co-founders of it. The other co-founder is not here today, but was unable to make it. Uh, we welcome you to, uh, to our 40th anniversary concert. Uh, certainly keep, it, keep in mind, June 3rd, it's going to be at the South Huntington Public Library, which is the place where we did our first concert in 1972. I'm not going to speak, I'm going to just go over and play our first piece. Uh, this is, um, it's a program opener. Uh, it, is, uh, uh, it is considered on here a world premiere, but when you hear the music, it's really not a world premiere. Uh, it, it, today is April 1st, and I'd like to think of it as a little bit like April Fool's Day. And next week is the beginning of Pesach. So what I decided to do was to just have fun with a couple of pieces that you will all know from the Seders, uh, and uh, do them electronically. So I've given it the unreal name of Electro Pesach. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> 